In a recent academic exhibition, Sheila, a high school finalist, was busy scouting for a university. Just like any other student, she has hopes and dreams. I want to be a doctor and so I've visited the stand of Nairobi University and they've given me uh, various requirements of my dream as per why I want to be a doctor and they've told me that I need the cut-off point. They've told me my, cut my cut-off points of being a doctor. If I want to do medicine, that is a surgeon to be precise. And they have also told me the cluster points also. This uh, expo is really an exposure, if you like, a marketplace where students and stakeholders will be able to come and appreciate the various programs that we have. And it's critical for this country because we would like to build the you know, capacity for us to be able to continue uh, you know, implementing the programs and the flagship project of the Vision 2030. The few who get to this exhibition get to know the kind of universities that there are in Kenya, both public and private, the courses they offer and where they are located. Even the people in the remote areas get to know what we have at the university level, the courses that are there and the relevance that there is in the job market. The education sector was a top recipient of over 270 billion shillings in the 2013-2014 fiscal year. Funding as far as the uh, education sector is concerned, uh, you know that we have opened the bottom as far as the primary uh, school is concerned, the secondary school is concerned, and now the government is looking at the top as well. Uh, in the last one and a half years, we have moved from seven public universities to 22 a public universities and several private universities. This is again a way of ensuring that we can have and build capacity for people to be able to address the challenges and, and be able to build the social economic development of this country. But on the other hand, what are some of the fears harbored by students? Their school fees, of which that is my major challenge. The school fees, I'm fearing that I might not be able to achieve my dreams that is so shining, so bright in front of me due to school fees. They want to get in the program, but now when it comes to fees constraints, they are not able to. They are not able to. So they start and then they have to break to look for, for fees or, or such and so on, you see. But otherwise, there are very brilliant students out there. The really challenge is the many number of students who qualify, who get the minimum qualification, that is a C plus, end up not getting to the university because of the fee issues. The amount required is so high and uh, the government is able to support about 10% uh, among all the students who qualify. With current statistics indicating that over 70% of Kenyans live below the poverty line, how can fees affordability be addressed? If the government would consider sponsoring all the students who qualify for university education, then other institutions like a Higher Education Loans Board can come in to assist the needed students. Because when you look at uh, the level of deferment of studies because of school fee issues, it is uh, alarming. Over and above affordability, high dropout rates from foundation schooling to colleges and universities are alarming. Uh, we do not expect everybody to go to the university, of course. Uh, it is very critical for us to appreciate we also have the middle level, what we call the tertiary institutions, or sometimes you call them TVET, in my opinion are very critical for any uh, country like Kenya that is really would like to be an industrialized nation. So we also strengthen the component of TVET. So students who are not able to go to universities, not because TVET is a second class, but they also have another chance of taking a certificate or a diploma course and, and be able to you know, continue with their, with their careers as well. The majority cannot afford. Even the tertiary institutions cannot, uh, the higher other tertiary institutions cannot absorb all of them, which means we have quite a huge junk of young people out there who are not able to make it to university. For Q to be a proper subset of P, all the elements in To Q salvage the situation, players in this sector are calling on the government to address these challenges in a bid to rectify a growing concern of brain drain as many foreign institutions jostle for Kenya's top talent. When it comes to the, the, 
the, the brain drain. Yes, it is there, it has been much and so on. But uh, I would rather we do something to, because the problem, the problem is, uh, is the income or the, the money or the salaries that they get attracted to, to, go, to go abroad. There is no harm in Kenyans uh, being trained, of course. I would also advocate for that in very prestigious universities uh, around the world, but most importantly is for them to be able to come back. So my advocacy is for the brain circulation rather than uh, the brain drain. And I think there are very many modes. Uh, as long as we can be able to create enabling environment, and I can tell you now in government, in private sector in this country, it's very competitive. And, and there are quite a number of that enabling environment that should be able to make Kenyans, patriotic Kenyans, train abroad and come back so that we can be able to serve the government that has made us to what we are today.